well, I've worked with clay since 2002. I loved it since I started working with it and I thought I will experiment with earth dry clay and that's what I've been doing for um, a while now whenever I have a chance. So this one I mix with coffee and I also sewn on it and added some paint and glue and I'll show you how I did this in the video. But um, I also experimented with pepper and I created this one. It kind of looks like a stone if you see it. It's kind of rough and I like that look. Hi there, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Marcy and I love to do a lot of DIYs. <laughs> Today we're getting our DAS clay out and we're going to roll it, trying to do it in the same thickness all over the place. But I'm gonna give you an example of how you can fix this thickness in case it doesn't go the way you plan to. So I borrowed two of my kids plastic Ikea plates to cut two different circles out of the clay. And you're going to see that all the excess clay that I have here, we're not gonna use right now, but uh, we'll store it for later. Now, when the circles are cut, uh, we're going to get them and cut the excess with scissors. I found this to be the easiest way to do it and it's very easy to clean your scissors afterwards. But you see that this circle right here, it's going to be really thick on one side and thin on the other. Not to worry, I'm gonna show you how to fix this. The point of this being the same thickness is because if it's really thin on one side and then thick on the other one, it's going to crack while drying. The reason being that air dry clay has water in it and it evaporates. And while the process is fast on one side and really slow on the other one, it's going to make the clay to crack. So now it's not all the same thickness, but it's kind of the same thickness all around it. And I'm actually going to use this one to show you that your project can still be done if the clay is not super the same all over the place, as long as it is kind of the same. So not to worry, we're going to keep working with this little piece of clay. We're gonna pop it out of the container and then get a pokey tool or some needles if you have any thick ones. And we're going to start poking holes. This is a plastic needle that I got from one of my kids sewing kits. And yes, I have three boys and they like sewing and they like doing any crafty stuff that we might come across. So I encourage you, if you have kids, you probably could do this with them. Just make sure you help them out so they don't get hurt with the scissors or any other um, materials that we might use in this video. But it's pretty easy, just poke four holes on each side. We're going to be sewing some thread afterwards for this. But, and don't worry about the little bumpy stuff, we're going to sand that out. Just pop it back into the container and this one's going to end up being a little bit oval shape instead of circular, and that's okay, it's fun. So just sand it whenever it's dry. Mine, I left it to dry for about a week. It didn't have to take that long, but it's cold here in Spain, and I like to dry my projects with a little bit of a damp cloth on top of it because we're running the heater all day. So it's okay, it's gonna dry, it's just gonna do it slowly. Just follow the instructions on your package. Now I'm taking a little bit of art medium and I'm putting it in the middle of my um, project. I'm taking a little lump out, but you just rub it in your project until it's thin enough so that it can get stuff to stick to it, but not too thin that it will be difficult for stuff to stick to it because we're going to be using the colander you see on the image to um, put some coffee a little bit on it. It will go through the colander and this will help it um, move around my little piece of clay and it will stick in that part where we put the medium in. So this is what it looks like. You can just blow a little bit on it. It won't stick anywhere else and it will start to melt. So wait like 15 minutes or 20 and this is what it will look like. It will start melting and it will become a little bit more shiny. Mm -hmm. 
after that I took a bit of coffee and water and added little by little the water so that I knew how much um, of a consistency I was getting. This depends on the color that you want to do. I didn't want to do it too uh, dark or too light, kind of like a medium. And you're going to see that I'm pulling a little bit of that coffee away from the glue. Not to worry, it's going to start like melting into the new coffee. And this is a really cool technique so that it looks um, like it has texture of its own. At least a little bit of texture so that it looks really interesting, but it's not overwhelming to look at. And I want this surrounding area to be a little darker, but a little bit more of a subtle texture, if I can say that, because then we're going to be adding bubbles, coffee bubbles to it. And even though the coffee bubbles are not going to show as much, I do want it to be different color than the center. So it depends on what you want to do. You don't even have to do it the same way I do it. I'm just showing you what you can do. So far, I'm making it very friendly. <laughs> and that had a little bit of hand soap in it. And then I added the coffee and then a little bit of water. And you saw how little I added. And now we're just mixing it and mixing it until we get it really bubbly so that we can apply it to our project. Just stick your hand in it and apply it all over the place. I really like the rustic look of things. If you wanted something more controlled, then maybe you can apply it with the same little um, straw that you mixed it with or with a spoon. I like doing it with my hands. And now the little bubbles are going to pop and they're going to leave a really subtle color in there because I didn't put too much coffee in it. Again, I didn't want this to be too dark. Now you can see how the little bubbles look and it's very subtle, different color, but very cute. Now we're going to have to add some little bit of acrylic paint to this and mix it with our art medium. You can also mix it with glue, but I like to do the art medium better. Glue works fine too. So don't worry if you only have glue, Elmer's glue works fine. So or PVA as you call it in Australia, I think. But just mix it up a little bit. And of course, I'm trying to add my glue and it won't come out. But uh, you dilute it with um, a little bit of water and mix it and mix it with the glue. And it's going to turn into like a little pasty, runny solution. And we're going to apply this little, it, I don't know what to compare it with right now. Maybe with like crepes mix. <laughs> if you like to cook breakfast, but we're just applying it starting at the edge and letting it drip. Don't worry if it covers the holes, we're going to poke them again with the needle or the pokey tool and it's going to be fine, I promise. It's good. So let it drip and now this has to dry for 24 hours. So let it dry for the 24 hours, be patient. Don't use a heat tool or a hair dryer or anything to speed up the process because it's gonna damage your project. You could also add color instead of using white um, acrylic paint, you can use any other color of acrylic paint. Now, once that dries, what you're gonna wanna do is get your acrylic varnish and go outside. I'm using this MTN brand, you can use whatever you have on hand. This one I like a lot because it's non-yellowing and I've worked with it a lot with clay and it works really good. I'm only spraying the front here because on the back I'm going to use this one, which is the second time I used it and it's pretty good so far. So I'm going to spray black all over this um, back area. And I want to move it with my finger so that I can spray the other side, but also because I want that paint to get into the part that's touching the cardboard. So it's a little bit more rustic looking. I think this is going to add character to it. Now you might want to reach for your needle and the color thread that you want to use. Make two little knots at the end and cut the excess as close as you can to your little knots. Um, I'm cutting it really, really short because I really don't want the bulkiness in my piece or the knot to be visible. 
and then you're going to thread it from the inside out and pull it all the way through but when you get to the end then you're going to open the little thread area that you doubled up and you're going to get your needle through it so that it's stuck right there and it ties to your piece then you're going to hold your thread uh, with your other hand and your fingers and you're going to start not from the outside but from the inside again and pull it through kind of doing like a blanket stitch just um not in a blanket <laughs> but in a piece of clay so you're going to hold it again and you're going to do the same thing again you're going to get it through your piece and you're going to adjust the little um loop so that it actually it's space in between each loop like a piece of um your project is showing oh my god i'm running out of words so this is what happens if you don't put it through see if you don't put it through then it's not going to look like a blanket stitch but don't worry you can just put it through at this point if you didn't um do it right and it's okay you can always fix it now hold it again and this time you're going to stick it back from the outside to the inside but from the other side of the thread so that it doesn't become undone and it's really stuck in there and then anything that you want to do here because I went multiple times around it because I wanted it to be a little bit thicker than just one piece of thread so I did this multiple times and I did it over and over until it was um, the desired thickness I wanted and basically when the needle couldn't go through anymore and that to me looked really pretty um, and good and looked full then you're going to put it underneath everything you just did, pull it through, and then pull it through the other little side where the blanket stitch was. And this way it's going to look a little bit more put together. But um, you can do whatever you want. You can crisscross it or do another um, stitch that you know here. But basically I'm getting it through and I'm going to go back inside so that I can make this one as thick as the one before and I'm going to keep doing this until I reach the end. Maybe you can mix and match different um, colors of thread. It's your piece so you can do whatever you want to do and I'm sorry sometimes I'm going off frame it's just really difficult to see the holes while filming but um, once you get to the end you're just going to make another knot um, as if you were sewing um, any other piece of um, clothing <laughs> that you might have to mend. See, you're going to just make a little knot here. And I did two knots just to make it extra secure. And then I just cut my thread. And that was about it. Feel free to let me know what other ideas you have to make your own. Maybe you would do something different or add a different design. I don't know, cheetah print or maybe an eye. Just let me know in the comments below. And this is what it looks like where I put my little jewelry piece in. And I think it looks pretty cool and rustic, especially the black paint around the edges makes it look old and sort of vintage in a way. <laughs> Okay, now for the second project, I just rolled my clay out again, took my ruler and cut a rectangle with it. This is not measured or anything like that. I just eyeballed it. And here's a little trick for your extra clay. Put it in a little bowl and cover it with a damp cloth so that it doesn't dry on the edges and on top. This will prevent it for it to be hard to work with in the future. Now I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna grab my scissors and cut the excess. Although I'm gonna use water with this one to smooth it out a little bit more. Not just to smooth it out to be honest because I still want this to be rustic, but when you apply water to air dry clay, it makes it kind of like sticky. So things would adhere to it easily or a little bit more um, faster and in this case since we're going to use pepper what I want to do is get the pepper to stick in there and whatever doesn't I still want to leave an imprint 
Okay, so I just used my straw to cut three little holes because I want to put some twine through them. But here's what I meant. If it's still wet, which it is here, um, add your pepper, slightly, slightly press it with your jar or whatever you use to roll your clay out with. And then we're going to tap it after on the sides so that it will stick to the sides again. So see, I'm just tapping it or dabbing it to just get that extra little pieces in there. Some of them are going to still fall and that's what's going to make it look like it's a little bit more stone instead of clay. If that makes any sense, you're going to see it at the end. I'm going to uh, do a close up to show you. But just repeat the process on the other side. And I know it's a little messy because it's wet and then you get all like your hands get all white and sticky, but it's worth it. Now, instead of putting it back into the bowl, we're just going to um, put some napkins that fold it in the back to give it that little shape, but not too much shape so that, that my plant can sit in the middle. This is what it looks like before um, I'm gonna spray it with the MTN acrylic varnish that we used before. Again, I love it because it's non-yellowing and it's easy to use. So we're just gonna spray it all over the place wait for it to dry then flip it and spray it on the other side and this is what it looks like you see what stone kind of texture i told you about before it was in the edges now you're gonna get your twine put a little bit through it make two knots and then cut the little extra piece that's hanging and then wrap it around as many times as you want again i want to make it super chunky and you just wrap it and wrap it and once you get to the end and you cut it you're gonna add a little drop of glue or whatever you have in hand that actually makes things adhere it can be super glue it could be white glue it could even be the acrylic medium i used here so whatever you feel like it's best for your project this it's going to make it um this little trick that i'm doing here it's going to make it so that the piece it's underneath the other one so it's not a complete knot but it's under there before i add my glue so this helps it stay still and the glue is not going to dry shiny so don't worry about that and those little extra hairs that you see around, you can actually burn them with a lighter um, very lightly on top of it. I like this rusty kind of look, so I'm not going to do that, but just so you know that you could do it. And this is what it looks like. I really hope you like it. My plan seems to look good in it. So, um, yeah, let me know what you're going to make. That's it for today, guys. If you love this video, please give it a like. And which one is your favorite? Pepper? Coffee? Leave it in the comments below. And if you end up making any of these projects, please tag me on Instagram at MixItUpMarcy. I'll leave everything in the description below. Bye. Have a good day.